Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon to everyone around the world. Welcome back to the One Piece video featuring your girl, Perona. Get ready. It's going to be a very, very spicy deck profile in which I'm very excited to bring to you, let alone a fan favorite leader here in OP06, in which has a lot of talk behind her for good reasons. Her ability is actually really, really strong, let alone, again, she's a fan favorite and she's a control deck. So I hope you're ready for it. It's going to be a lot of fun. And speaking of which, her ability goes as follows. You choose one or the other, which is really good. But at the end of the day, most people opt to just rest a four cost unit instead of getting that minus one reduction. But you can do either or. If you rest a four cost unit, it allows you to do other things in which the deck really synergizes well with dropping an X trick to kill that rested unit of four costs or less and or dropping a Ryoma to kill the four costs or less that you rested with your leader ability, which is really strong. So there's a lot of synergistic plays that you can make here with this leader effect. But either way, let's dive into this list and see what we have cooking up. We are running a lot of blockers. I don't know if you noticed, between 12 blockers in the deck with four Rosinante, four Sabo, and four Borsalino. Now, these are self-explanatory, especially the Rosinante. This is something that I generally will have in every single one of my Perona lists. I think this card is phenomenal here in this deck, in any other green deck. It allows you to set up your plays for the following turn by having a blocker who is reliable. But you do got to keep in mind there are cards in the game that we all know, we all hate them, unless you're a yellow player. It be what it be. There are cards, like Amaru, that can just rest your blockers and get over them. That's something you got to deal with. But, in hindsight, what this guy allows you to do is, if any of your other cards were to be KO'd, so ideally, if you're playing against another Perona, and they decide to, you know, rest your Kuzan, and then pop it, with like an X-Drake or Ryoma or some other ability or just attack into it, doesn't matter. As long as you have this guy on board, you can sacrifice him instead and get back the card that they were actually going to kill. So in other words, he will die in their place, which is really, really nice. But in any case, we're running four Sabos just for the ability to protect our units, right? Because again, playing against other Peronas, and other Gecko Morias and all that sort of thing. Sabo is actually really good because it allows you to keep your cards on board without having to risk them dying due to cards being popped with effects, which is really strong. But he also gives you that filter aspect that allows you to draw two trash two. That way you can get cards in trash for Gecko Moria's ability if need be. And then four copies of Borsalino. This is gonna be a staple. Some people run two, some people run four. Personal preference, I do like four. I like to see it at least you know once or twice a game at the bare minimum. But he's also a 6k blocker when your opponent attacks into you, which is nice. When it comes to searchers though, we are only running baby five. I've seen some lists that do the Bonnie thing. I've seen some lists that do uh, just the Navy package, just the brand new. I understand it, I get it. But personally for me, the baby five works well considering the fact that she can search out your Rosinantes, she can search out your Dofis, and she can grab you 2Ks. Because you gotta keep in mind, Virgo here is a Navy and a Dofi Pirate. So at the end of the day, she's double dipping. You see what I mean? And you really only need her, like reliably, to pull out your 10 cost. I mean, if she grabs you a blocker early, great. If she grabs you a 2K early, great. You're really just searching to make sure you are able to draw into Dofi at some point in the game. So she does her job well. And then on top of that, she is considered a pseudo blocker, in which most other decks you play against that aren't like a Gecko Moria or Perona or what have you, who have easy access to removal, they'll attack into this instead of your life, which is nice. The final searches, which are self-explanatory, are going to be brand new. Brand new allows you to hit every Navy card here in the deck including the x Drake as well. So, I mean, that's no question you need to have him in here just so you can filter out cards. Now, there are some spicy elements here, be it that the Brook. You don't see this a whole lot, but I thought about it. I've seen this in some lists. I've considered it. I do like it. I think this card is actually pretty busted, to be fair, considering you can choose one or the other. The put three cards from trash back to the deck is only good into a, uh, a raise you considering that they're able to draw cards from trash or play cards from trash with the abilities, my bad. 
being able to put them back into the deck basically means like you're kind of bottom decking which is kind of nice but it's the atop ability which allows you to kill anything a four cost or lower so i mean that is very very strong right now especially on top of something like an ice age which is pretty good but two copies of brook here he does have no counter power so we don't want to go heavy on him and he's a six drop so in other words you need to be able to have that combo ready to go be it that rest something with your leader drop a brook and or drop like a Ryoma or a Kuzan or what have you or maybe blockers down but he's really good for what he does especially for his cost but overall this has been the build that we're gonna be diving into I'm gonna talk about a couple more things here some some combos some synergies that some people probably don't think about but either way let's get into it real fast so with cards like Perona she rests up to four costs on the field and there are some times when your opponent can drop something like give or take a uh, katakuri that she that she can't rest essentially this is when cards such as ice age come into play this is when cards kuzan come into play against like a yellow deck this card is going to be key to have on board taking one life early is fantastic because it allows your opponent not to be able to get that the kuzan instead they have to impact it if they are running that card which would be which would be reject impact it is getting banned but some people are still going to abuse it so it'll be this here Gidetsu, or thunderbolt generally that's going to remove this right but if you have a kuzan on board you got that minus four for the big mom you can pop an ice age on it you can rest it if need be then you can kill it with either a ryoma or an extra egg. just something to consider there are many ways to do the cost reduction but at the end of the day if something is out of your reach with perona's ability you got the Kuzan, you got the Ice Age, you can deal with it. You just got you got to draw into it. And this is why we're running the Borsalinos here, or sorry, the brand news. That way you're able to dip between both of your cards you need for cost reduction. But overall, this is a list in which I'm having a lot of fun with, especially with Gecko Moria finally being here in OPO6 as well, which just like the Rebecca that we know and love, he does a similar thing, be it that you can pull back at four cost on the board, and a two cost on the board. You can choose which ones you want active, which ones you want rested. So for instance, you can bring back the Rosinante here as an active unit, therefore he can block for you. And then you can bring back an X Drake or a Ryoma to pop something, but they come into play rested. Which does not necessarily matter, especially when it comes to this guy, considering that when he is sent to the trash, he also kills something again. But overall, Let's dive into a couple games here and see what we got going on. Now, before we get into today's games, I do want to go ahead and say thank you to ACG Town for sponsoring this video. This is one of the places where I come to look at certain anime and when it comes to like apparel and all that sort of thing, this is one of the websites. It's actually pretty solid. They have some decent prices, let alone there's, there's sales all the time for all of your favorite animes out there. One Piece from Demon Slayer to Honkai Star Rail. Not an anime, but it's something that everyone out there is playing right now. Genshin Impact, Jujutsu Kaisen, there's a lot of stuff here from Bleach, Fairy Tale, all that sort of stuff. They do clothing, apparel, all sorts of apparel from 3D printed hoodies, which are actually really, really good. And we're not talking about like those generic hoodies or t-shirts you find inside of the mall that has just, you know, a random anime picture on it. No, no, no. These actually look really, really good, man. These look pretty fire. For those of you guys out there that work out and stuff and are interested in shorts, I picked up a pair of these recently. And they have that, that double layer aspect to them. I know it's something simple. And when it comes to phone cases, they range from a wide of different animes and mobile games and stuff, such as Honkai, Star Rail, Genshin Impact, all of that. But overall, give this place a shot. Let me know what you think about it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Dive into a bunch of games today. Going to have a lot of fun with it, at the very least, considering we are playing Perona. But... In any case, before we get into these games, I do want to say thank you guys. I appreciate all the love and support you guys have been showing me here on the channel, let alone out in the local scene and all that sort of thing. I've been meeting a lot of people, having a good time. But overall, we're all here to get together to play One Piece because we enjoy the TCG. And for those of you guys out there that went to pre-release, it was crazy. Especially up here at Gaming Giant, it was that was a huge line. And I've seen some other places out here waiting four hours in line just to get boxes. It's wild out here. But overall, it was a good time. 
I just wanted to make sure I appreciate everybody. Make sure you guys know that. And on top of that, the channel has been growing tremendously. Now that I say that, you know, karma is going to be a thing, but let, let's hope not. Either way, we got, we're close to 3,200 subscribers, in which I told you we're going to do a giveaway, you know? So stay tuned for that. I'll drop the details here soon, as soon as we reach that goal. Either way, let's dive back to these games here. Unfortunately for me, I'm playing against a Raju. And sadly enough, this is a very hard deck for Perona to be able to beat, which is an issue due to the fact that Raju just brings back cards from the trash. So every time I kill them, she has access to them still. We are not like Sakazuki, where we can bottom deck things with Houndblaze. As soon as we kill them, they're going to go to the trash, and she's just going to bring them back. Just like there. Which does suck. Because if he was able to bounce that to my hand, instead we could just play it back down. Instead, Rosanante goes to the trash, and we can't get the effect off. But, I mean, that's not bad. Drawing the brand new off the brand, drawing the Borsalino off the brand new is pretty good. Now I have noticed though, as long as I stay aggressive in this matchup, generally, we can do well. But if I keep going for board, then that's a problem. Because it's kind of a waste, because she's just, just going to get the card back on board the following turn. So. But, the Borsalinos... The Sabos here are very, very strong when it comes to the blocker aspect. Especially when she starts dropping Ichijis on board. 8k, huh? I, I guess we got no choice. Okay, so she did have it. I've seen some Reiji players decide to, like, drop their uh, the smaller bodies on board without having the raid suits. You know what I mean? So it kind of just sits there, and as Perona, we can just remove it easily. Hmm. We could... We could do the, uh, the Moria thing here. So I want to bring this out active, and I'll bring this out rested to pop that. I don't necessarily care too much about the Reiju being on board, but in that play, I decided to put the Rosinante active just so if she does kill the Ryoma here we can protect it if we choose to which not as then she will bounce it back to hand but we'll see there she goes another Yanji in the trash I think most decks will run about two to three of those so that's good for me there goes Akaya all right she's digging for something maybe she's looking for another Niji Okay. Yep. She got it. What are you bouncing back? Oh, okay. You're just killing that instead. Alright, that's fair. Hmm. We'll take this hit. I don't want to give her the 2k. We can block with this one. Draw into another brand new here. Moria's on board, so we have a lot of poke. We could Dofi her. I just don't know if the Dofi is worth it right now. Because only resting the leader in the Reiju, which we don't care about too much. The removal might have been a better choice. So that's fine. Let's just go a lot of pokes. See if they can keep up pressure. Because we still have gotten Borsalino here on board. Which I'm not necessarily like too confident in. Because she can just remove it. By sending it back to my hands. But this is why we play another one, right? Go ahead and play this on top of this. We'll pass it up. Just in case she does get another Niji. You know what I mean? Because that's something we don't want to deal with, but just a possibility. We will guard out. If she decides, okay, she is going to go for it. Alright, that can swing at me for 7, which we have the 2k counter being the Virgo in hand. She got a Sora. Which she can't really make any plays with right now. Due to the fact she only has 2 Dawn, so... We'll guard out with this as well. And then this should be game, depending on how we want to go about it. No blockers, 2 life left. 
Seven cards in hand. Let's go nine to face. We don't even need the Dofi here. Do nine here as well. We're just going to poke the bear, boys. That's it. Let me get it. Okay. She's probably thinking she should have played the Yanji down earlier. I don't think it really matters in this matchup, considering the fact that we can just rest it. So, perhaps doing the Niji was the better play. So, being an avid queen enjoyer myself, this is just one of those matchups where it just doesn't favor you. At all. Queen is going to have a hard time here, especially if I'm able to draw into Doflamingo. And some people may be confused as to why that is, but Doflamingo is key to winning this match if, when you are playing against Queen. And you guys will at locals on Sim or whatever. You guys will see Queen. But don't be worried about it. Like, don't even fret. Most of the time, eh, we'll counter out of this. Most of the time, Queen's hand is nothing but bricks. And as long as you guys are constantly aggressive every single turn with Perona, we should be aight. Let's go ahead. Uh, we, I guess we can't take anything here, so that does suck. So that means we're going to go 8k here. Now, anyway, as long as we are constantly aggressive every single turn, we should be fine. Attack in which Queen can't deal with the number, you know what I mean? So if we're going 8k and 9k or what have you each turn, they either have to give us the 2k's or take the damage. Most Queen players that I've played against, generally... They're not ready for it. Because they have a lot of bricks in hand most of the time. So even as Perona, we're going face. We're being aggressive. We're making sure they don't have the active effect of their leader. When it's time to go. You know what I mean? Ooh. That's not good here. Because we can just rest through that with leader effect anyway. He didn't play anything on board. So that tells me he doesn't have x -Drake. He doesn't have Doflamingo. He has a bunch of bricks. So this game right there, this game's over at this point. Because we already know what he's got going on. Yep. Alright, so we got another blocker off that, which is fine. So this means we'll have to clear at least one of these during our following turn. As much as I want to take the last life, we're going to have to kill the blocker and get ready for the end game. Even though we are only on turn four. There's the category. I don't know why you did that. I think I would have put the brulee and or the boa to the bottom of life there. That way you're guaranteed to at least survive. Because there's no shot that he's able to heal up, right? Because he needs four cards in total between life and and in hand playing the katakuri there and not bottom decking one of your own or sorry bottom lifing one of your own blockers seemed a little awkward to me let's we'll go seven here into the brulee i'd rather have went in for the brulee there instead of going for the queen leader just in case he was actually going to pitch the 2ks to lower his hand i figured he would have let the brulee go you know there goes the mihawk which again, we don't really care about. And I want to take this match slow here. We don't have to drop the Moria. In hindsight, I probably should have, uh, you know, dropped the Borsalino first on board, but it's okay. Not really worried about it all too much. Let's get rid of it. Baby five. We've already had the Dofi in hand, so this really isn't helping us here. Yeah, I know. I did it backwards. Okay, it's fine. It we'll get there. So we get a Virgo, unfortunately. So now we have to deal with this one. Let's rest the blocker and go attacking into it. Like I said, it's better that way instead of him just discarding two 2Ks to lower his hand. Nice. I love that card. Raging Tiger is so good. Unfortunately, we have to block here. Alright, so another Boa, which is useless in this matchup still. 
Let's rest it. Let's get the Dofi down. This is key. It's when the Mihawk and or the high cost attacks, then you can drop down the Dofi to rest a Queen Leader. The Dofi not only protects you from on board, it protects you from the Queen, which the Queen is constantly going to heal every time he swings once he gets the you know low cards and low life. In this aspect, Dofi stops all of it. Unfortunately for him, we draw we drew into another one, so. Let's go 5k to face. Go to 10k here. And considering the fact that he hasn't drawn a uh, what do you call it, X-Drake or a three-cost Dofi, he doesn't know what he's getting here on life. So risking it all on that trigger is uh Never a good idea. So there's no way he gets down to, to four between the two to start healing up. So he's got eight cards to play with right now between his hand and his life currently. So there's no way he's going to have enough cards to play on board to be able to start healing up the following turn. So I guess we'll just discard a Virgo. We need to keep Dofi on board. And this should be game here. So he did have 2Ks in hand. You see what I'm saying? He had the 2Ks, but he kept taking the hits for some reason. What could that possibly be? It could be a Beggie, and then he could counter out with the zero cost event if he does have it. So how about, how about we go for board this turn? Because we don't have another Dofi in hand to protect it. And if that is a Beggie, he could Beggie my other Dofi and then, uh, I guess, counter out of the Perona. Or take the hit with the Perona. So instead, we'll just worry about clearing board. We'll go 15 into the Yamato as well with the other Dofi. Now, this way, he doesn't have a choice. He either has to have a, a 9 drop or an 8 drop here, or he loses the game. Or Red Rock, another blocker. Yeah, I so there's the EMs. Heals one. He didn't swing because he was afraid of me dropping another Dofi down. But instead, we'll just Moria. What do I want here? I guess we would either take the Morselino. Hmm. I guess we get the Kuzan here. The Kuzan will be more important. That way he can stay on board and uh, we can remove the bigger bodies or arrest them if need be. One Dawn is active, so either he just didn't want to attack me last turn, or he runs out the work. What could that life be? Is it a Beggie? Reject. So he stacked the Reject just to draw a card, so we could have potentially won the previous turn. And he did have Dofi in hand, I don't know. Oh well. Alright ladies and gentlemen, you knew it. The Mirror Match is bound to happen. This is a very very much i guess fan favorite deck like i mentioned before everyone's playing perona so at the end of the day how do we do this matchup i guess the simple answer would be like you do every other control match you control for board the first person that gains control wins the game generally so let's see how perona does here we know what's going to happen right at the end of the day she's going to rest it tack into the brand new which is fine and she's going to play a card two dawn left we already know what that's going to be, considering we are Perona. Makes sense. But, considering she played a body on board into my forward on turn, uh, she, she kind of messed up. We'll just kill it, go 5 face, and see what she wants to do here. If she doesn't have the Ryuma or Extrick, she's in trouble. So we get a Virgo out of that. She did have it. Awesome. If only it was rested, right? But it's alright, we have the extra in hand to handle the Ryuma. We're gonna have to take this hit. I don't want to pitch two Rosinantes. Ooh, we can do the extra or the Brook here. This will make it a little bit more difficult for her to deal with, considering the fact that she will need the Ice Age here, or Helmepo, or something of a cost reduction before she can arrest me. And in that sense, that means she would need two cards to deal with the Brook here. So Brook is more than likely going to survive. Negative Hollow, huh? I like that. That's pretty good. Pretty good spice. 
Because we're at 8 Dawn right now. So I could do the thing. But we won't have enough Dawn to kill the Virgo. So that is a problem. But I can still bring back the Rosinante if need be. I just don't think it's worth it right now. Let's go 6. Depending on what she opts to do, then we might do it. Sindri as well. Maybe that means she's running Rebecca and Lucci in here. Another negative hollow. Hmm. Let's do the thing. I know it's not the best value here, but we're able to at least get our bodies back on board. We'll do that, and then we'll probably take the brand new. If we take the Rosinante, it comes in rested here, which is fine, because she'll probably attack into it, which might be a good idea. This way, if she decides to rest my Ryuma and then pop it with a Drake or another Ryuma there, we can get rid of the Rosinante to protect it. But she has to attack into that first. Oh boy. She be doing the thing. She gonna learn today. You better hit the right one. And you didn't. Oh, that's crazy. Uh, <laughs> it's all good. It happens. It happens to the best of us. All right, a little banter, a little banter. Let's get back to the game here. It just, it just wild to me that you play the exact same card and you didn't, you know, you don't realize what the card does. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, Rosinante can can take can take the ability and make sure the other card stays on board. That's just crazy. The sequence would have been to attack the Rosinante there with the Virgo first, but. That's okay. It happens. Greater Eruption as well. Uh, we'll get rid of a Doflamingo. We don't need him right now. Although we didn't need the Baby 5 either, but uh, having that 1k is nice. Hey, we got the dub. So, I've realized, playing into Law, this match here is very scary. Every time I play against a Law, depending on what deck I'm playing against, it's just like, please let me have something on board. This matchup sucks, bro. I'm trying to tell you. Thankfully, though, they played Gordon down first. Which, a lot of laws tend to do this. They'll play down a Gordon to ready themselves for the following turn. But, in a Perona sense, and a Gekomoria sense, it's just not a good idea. We're going to pop it. I think leader ability here, rest this, and uh, hey, brand new. Get the work. Thank you. Hmm. Did we just play the Kuzan? Uses as bait. Gets to draw a free card. When I say bait, it's more so that I want him to remove three Dawn and then invest into removing the Kuzan here. Okay. Plays on a kid. Alright. And a Beppo. Goes six. Hmm. We have the 2k, but I don't really want to waste it right now. I don't feel threatened, unless he has like multiple Zoros in the following turn. Four cards in hand. It's probably better just take the hit. Let's go ahead and counter out here. As much as I didn't want to, I don't know if he's got two Zoros in hand for the following turn. That's just more attacks and less cards that I'll have in hand after a counter out. Do we kill the Eustace kid? Is that going to be the play? Or do we just attack first? I think we need to attack first with Kuzon. We have to go six, right? Bare minimum. That way he's forced to at least give me a card in hand. Minus four to this. Okay. You know, I've noticed though, playing a little bit of Sakazuki here and there, I feel that as soon as you cost reduction something, especially a blocker, not in the sense that opponent will block with that, with that card. Right? Am I wrong? Because now they feel like, okay, now they're going to remove it, yada yada. But sometimes it's just a bait. In this sense, he should have blocked with it because I was definitely going to remove it. But still, obviously he didn't know that. Do we care? I think we absolutely do. Get rid of Borsalino. I want him to work for this. Alright, he's working for it. Hmm. I'll do the same thing. We'll guard out. Do you have another one? There's no shot you have another Zoro. 
Okay. All right. I see you. Why didn't he attach Don to Beppo? Oh, okay. That was a lot of bodies in one turn, boys. And especially ones I don't want to deal with, but that was a lot. Well played. He got out uh, quite a bit of cards in my hand there as well. But Kuzon's still alive. So Moria could be a good option here. But let's go ahead and start attacking, see what he wants to do. Go for the Beppo first. He gave it to me. Sharp for Zoro. I think we're looking good, boys. I mean, there isn't a whole lot of options here. Actually, you know what? Let's take a second Kuzon here. I don't necessarily need the Borsalinos, but we could do the Kuzon and then into a Rosinante, which is fine. We can draw a free card and we can drop this on board as well. Double Kuzon here is pretty spooky. If he has to deal with one, we still have another one. And on top of that, this is one way I felt that dealing with Law is probably the best. Having multiple units on board, like trying to spam it as much as you can, generally gives you a lot of control. Considering the fact that he can only remove one at a time, you know? Unless he dons up and attacks into something else. But if that's the case, that's totally fine. He did see a lot of his cards as well. I haven't really seen any more Gordons or Maxes right now. So, I mean, there's that. But he's had multiple opportunities to be able to remove the Kuzan. He just chooses not to. Hmm. Do I need the Sabo? Not really. It's a possibility he just goes six into that again. Yep. Which we could counter out. So why not? I don't need the blocker here. We've got five bodies on board for five swings. I can rest the kid, no problem. And we get another Sabo. That's lovely. Go ahead and do the thing. Oh, that's nice. Get rid of the baby five here, and I guess one of these. Right? Yeah, this will work out. We don't have six, though, but we do have Dawn to play with to go for game here, or actually do a lot of damage, so. We'll go six minus four to this. There's no shot you don't block with that, right? Okay. Law, you feeling okay? Okay, rad beam. Let's rest the kid. And then let's go five to face. Oh crap. You know, I said the card out loud and I still messed up. I deserve that one. It's fine. It's okay. We all make mistakes. That's crazy. Can't believe I just did that. We'll just go nine nine. Doesn't really matter at this point. We'll do that. Double rad beam. Alright. We'll kill the kid. So potentially... He does... Mm, two... Six attacks this turn? Implying he might have two Zoros in hands, plus the three on board, plus leader. That's a lot of hits, boys. I mean, we've got four life. We have enough to survive, I think, depending on what those life cards are. But if not, bare minimum, it's four attacks, which I'm totally fine with. All right, so he had six Dawn. He plays Dawn to max. I was thinking he might have done double Zoro if he had it in hand. That would have been six attacks in this turn, which I wouldn't have been able to defend out. So considering he didn't do that, I'm assuming he doesn't have them. And instead of we're going for the removal on Sabo. So minus three. That card is so good, by the way. The new max is so, is so nice. Just another Gordon for free, man. Five Don left to play with. He spent two. Minus one. Okay. The Gamma Knife. He only can remove one of these at a time. So unless he's attacking into the Moria. And then bottom decking the Sabo. 
Shiraya. Removes that, plays Law down. Double blocker on board. Oh. I guess we just let this go, right? One, two, three. He still has three more attacks into the Gekko Moria. I don't have enough to block that. Essentially, I, I could have protected at least one, and then we could have had maybe another card on board here. But I think we can still win the game like this. I think we gotta let this one go too. Double blockers. We'll take the hit. I mean... I still think we're okay. Technically speaking, we've got two attacks on board and we can remove the blockers here, no problem. I don't even need to use Ice Age. We can brick one and then rest the other with Perona effect and then go go face. It doesn't necessarily matter which one we do because they both can be rested. This guy is so strong, by the way. He's just a good card. Rest the law. We'll play the Brook. We'll pop the other one. He's got five cards in hand. And this should be game. There's no shot, right? Nice. Good job, man. That was close. Oh, th this is one of those matches where you're always nervous at the end of the day. Yamato is so spooky to play against this Perona. As 84 life leader, man, I'm always puckered. 6k. Oh, block out. Thanks. I appreciate that. A Hiori. Alright, it's a possibility of everything, pretty much, to be honest. Ooh. We'll take this. We need as many small blockers as we possibly can here in this match. We have to flood the board to be able to win this. What is it? All right. You got me. But yeah, kind of like you're playing the green kid matchup. You know, the one that just rests everything and then goes face all the time. I kind of treat this match just like that. You want to have as many blockers as you can in the early game. The double attack there wasn't too bad. I opted to take it just because I wanted more cards, not necessarily that we couldn't protect it, you know? But keeping the Rosinantes here on board is probably the better option, because he is going to drop a uh, a Hody at some point, right? More blockers, the better in that regard. It's a possibility Yams can still swing for 9k, which we'd have to block out. But I am just tempted just to take the hit. I feel confident in the amount of blockers this deck carries to be able to win it. We're going to live life on the edge here in this game. 100%. They probably weren't expecting me to do that. Another Hiori. So we're setting up for another trigger for next turn. We could pop the Cracker. That's one less attacker we have to deal with. Let's go five into it. That way we get a card out of hand at bare minimum. I can Dawn up the brand new. We have six Dawn here in hand to play with. Or we can just play down the brook to kill the cracker. But again, we need these blockers on board. Mm. We'll pass it up. What do you do? You got four blockers. Potentially, he is at a seven dawn turn with Hody Jones. So... If he plays Hody Jones down, though, he takes the trigger that he put back on his life there with the Hiori. But he rests two blockers, and then I have to block out the Cracker in the Yom Swing. And I have no bodies on board to, like, go for game the following turn. Not yet, anyway. Okay, 5k. He's definitely looking to plop, plop, plop. <laughs> He's definitely looking to play Hody here. I don't need the Doflamingo, so we'll get rid of the baby five. We can block this out with Borsalino here. Or we can just counter out of hands. Because I don't know if he does have a Hody Jones and he wants me to block with Borsalino. That way he can just kill it or attack into it. 
impact or reject, whatever you want to call it. Man, what are you doing? There's no way that was your best choice of action. That this, that just doesn't make any sense. We still have Gecko Moria in hand. This could be pretty spicy. Hmm. But again, you know what? Actually, we're just going to take it slow, boys. Like I said, we're going to take it slow. Discard two. We'll discard the Ryuma. And we'll discard an Ice Age here. Or the Brook. So the reason why we actually got rid of the, uh, the Ryuma is because we can bring it back with Moria. So it doesn't really matter. We're going to go five into Cracker. Just take it slow, boys. That's all you got to do. Take it slow. We got all these blockers on board. So we're chilling. Even though when he drops Hody down, we're still good. But this board, we gotta get rid of real quick. He goes 9k face. Hmm. We'll block out here. No, that's fine. Just let it go. Five down left to play with. Okay, same thing. We'll block out with Borston Lena. I guess first things first, right? Move this. And now we start getting spooky. Because Yamato's running out of juice. So, we'll go seven. All right, what was the trigger you put there? All right, uh, Kikyo, huh? I didn't want to have to deal with that one, unfortunately. Let's just rest it. Let's do the thing. We don't have to bring back another Rosinante here. Because we have another Gekko Moria in hand for later, if need be. We'll just pop it. As much as I don't want to kill it, it's better to do so. That way he doesn't have an extra swing on the following turn. We'll just pass it up. Now, if he has another one off life, that would suck, but I think it was fine to do it the way we just did. We still have three blockers on board, so we can protect out of the Hody Jones. If he plays Momo, this tells me he does not have Hody in hand. What could he possibly need? 9k... We'll block with Rosinante. We're losing blockers, boys. That's for sure. But we got Gecko now. We got Ryoma on board. We should be okay. That's a problem. I have the answer for it. But I have to drop a lot to do that. Let's just attack into it instead. Like I said, I know we're going to give him life. But it controls the board and minuses the amount of attackers that he has that I have to deal with. And I'm in a good spot, so. I get it, I have zero life, but we're not worried about it. We have the blockers to protect ourselves from the Hody. Goes the seven. Can you do it again? Nice. Of course. All right. Yo, like all of the triggers here. So we'll have to drop a Borsalino down. Because I can't rest it. We've already done that with our leader ability here this turn. So we'll have to play Borsalino. We'll have to pass after this because I cannot pop that. That feel when you're 10 done in with Yamato and still can't go for game. That's wild. All right. 7k to Borsalino. We'll counter out with the 2k Virgo. Remember, he goes up at 6k on your opponent's turn, which is really, really good. So, unfortunately for him, we still have three blockers on board. And he's not going to be able to get in damage here. Although we do lose a blocker here, because we actually have to do that. But still, four Dawn left to play with. Cracker on board. We got to remove the bodies yet again. We draw into another blocker. At least top decks are wild. I mean, he's hit nothing but triggers. And uh, I've had my whole board. All game. I don't think... I guess since the very beginning, we've had nothing but blockers down, so... You don't got this. Let's give it one. Kill the cracker. Nine down left to play with. Drop another Borsalina. We'll pass turn here. And then next turn, we'll go for face. So he gets another Kikyo off the surge, which does suck with the Momo. No Hody, though. 
Attaches two Dawn to this for what? You need more than that. Hitting that magic number though. And I don't have anything in hand, so that does suck. Let's get rid of this and get rid of an Ice Age. We'll block out. Now this should be game here. Oh, we got the Doflamingo though. Let's rest this real quick. Let's drop the Dofi. We chillin'. Unless... Unless that was a misplay and we should just went face. Because now is the opportunity to actually have Hody and just go for game. I probably should just went face, not drop the Dofi. That was a very solid game overall though. Like, really though? To be fair, I probably shouldn't have played the Dofi. I think I pushed it a little bit too risky here. Instead, we should have just donned up and swung with all of our bodies on board. Because that would have been five swings, three life. We should have been able to kill him. Most Yamato lists that you will see don't run with the Sanji blocker or any uh, form of blockers off the life. So I think we would have had the game. So that was a huge misplay on my part. But if we can see past that misplay, we played well. Absolutely. There might have been other opportunities here that we could have, we should have probably just went game, but we did not know what the triggers were. To play it safe, right? And what I mean by that is, it was just a possibility of him just dropping Onamis off trigger. And well, all right, ladies and gentlemen, I do appreciate everyone who's made it to the end of the video today. This was not as long as usual, right? We're not past an hour for once. Like, it's crazy, I know. But don't get me wrong, I'm enjoying my longer videos. So I was a little, little upset this one didn't reach an hour long. It's okay, it's all good. The next one probably will, even though I don't want it to. In any case, I do want to apologize to you guys i am sorry for the later video in the day today it should have been out earlier like yesterday it should have been out but alas we were out there at the pre-release until like two ish in the morning give or take so your boy was kind of exhausted i'm sorry i'm only human all right we'll get back onto a, a normal schedule as usual after this video goes out sometime today and then uh we should be good to go but overall this was my Perona deck list here for OPO6, in which I will be adjusting, trying different things out, letting you guys know a bunch of different spicy variants, in which you know I'm going to find them. And I have one in mind I already have here, already created. I'm not going to show you yet, because I'm still tweaking on the different variations and the ratios and what I want to do with it before I show it off, because I want it to be something I'm confident in. But, we're going to put this out there real quick. So, we use Baby 5 Search here, right? She pulls you back what? Doflamingo, Rosinante, and Virgo. Great. Well, Perona has access to many cards in the deck that allow her to get that minus cost reduction, right? So we do the Kuzan. We do the Ice Age. You got access to... Um, what's that dude's name with that with the hat? Uh, Helmeppo, right? Where is he? This guy. We have access to this as well, which allows us to get minus three cost reduction. We, we can pull him back from the trash if need be with the Gecko Moria. We can put him in the trash by countering out or by using this as well. In which, again, very solid card. This is in another list in which I'll showcase here later on in the channel. But in any case, those are some cost reduction routes that we can go, right? There's many of them. There's another one that I've been playing around with. And it's probably going to catch you by surprise. But you know me. If you notice, we have... A Doflamingo as a one cost that came out in OPO5 that didn't see play at all. Well, now it has an opportunity of getting something very, very valuable here in Perona. Considering the fact that we have access to cards such as the ones I mentioned, and then some, we also have access to Soldier, which came out in OPO5, which is very good here in this deck, considering the fact that it's a 2k, which goes to the trash, which we can get back from Gecko Moria if need be. It's an activate main by minus three, which is really solid. So with that being said, when it comes to the Doflamingo, it's a one drop that we can get off the searcher, which also has an activate main effect, which we can kill something that's two cost or lower, which is very easy to do in this build, but I digress. 
This has been Polished Plays. I do hope you guys enjoy this list. Let me know your thoughts and your opinions on your Perona deck list out there. Let me know your struggles, what you're working with, what you're cooking up. And I will catch you guys in the very next One Piece video. And or I will see you at Locals. This has been Pause Plays. Remember to hit that like button. It helps me out a lot here on the channel. Take care of yourselves. I'll see you all in the next one.